right, so this next skill I'm going to show you guys is the Kendrick extrication device, also known as the KED. Uh, this is no longer one of your possible randoms, but it is still a skill. It is a piece of equipment that is out there. So I will show you guys from start to finish, but we will not follow uh, the National Registry check sheet at this time. I'm just going to simply show you guys how to properly place this device on a person. All right, welcome back. This is going to be a fun skill, right? So the Kendrick extrication device, also known as the KED. This is no longer um, a national registry skill, but it is still a tool that you'll have on your piece of equipment. So it's important to know what you use it for, and it's important to know uh, how to use it, obviously. So I'm gonna demo that and I'll talk a little bit about it. So this is the type of device that you would only use on a low priority patient, um, somebody with back pain um, that does not have any type of critical injuries because it does take a second to uh, put on the patient. So when you walk up and you realize that this is a situation where it's not high priority, um, the patient's complaining of some back pain, and so you're gonna go ahead and use this. You'd have your partner hold and maintain manual stabilization of the spine, so she's gonna get into the C-spine there, holding the patient, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a C-collar on. So I would properly measure. You can adjust your C-collars here as you see. And we're gonna make sure that this is a snug fit, but not so tight that it's uncomfortable, ma'am. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Can you breathe fine? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and check pulse motor sensory of all four extremities. Can you feel me touching you? Yeah. Can you feel me touching you? Yeah. Can you move your fingers? Yeah. All right, good. Let's go down here. We're feeling for pulses. Can you feel me touching you down here? Yeah. What about here? Mm -hmm. Can you move your feet? Yeah. All right, very good. So now that you have that, you're gonna go ahead and get your device. Now, moving this into position is sometimes a little bit tricky. I'm gonna come over here on this side uh, where the straps will move past her from the back. This is, uh, it's always best if you go ahead and you make sure that these are wrapped up nice and neat before you start to move it. Otherwise, it's gonna get caught behind the patient. It's also a good idea to have this buckled like this. As you see, it can come unbuckled. It's good to have it buckled before you push it through. That way it's not hanging down, getting caught on stuff. Once it gets on the other side, you'll need to undo it. So we're gonna work together. You holding C-spine on your count, we're gonna move the patient forward just slightly so we can fit this behind her. Okay, you ready? On your count. One, two, three. Okay, we're just moving the patient up a little bit. And I like to just try to feed this between the arms and around the back. Obviously, this is a lot easier to do in a classroom with a chair. If you're working with a car, not so easy. Okay. Now that we got this on the other side, makes it a little simpler. Give me a little slack on that. Okay, we're going to move your patient back. We're going to put this up underneath the arms. We need this part to go directly underneath the armpits. All right, so on your count. We're going to go back. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. There we go. Making sure that's a nice snug fit. It's up underneath the armpits well. Very good. All right, so I'm going to walk in front of you a little bit because that's easy to do when there's a car here. You're just going to walk straight through the car, right? Not so much. All right, we're going to start with the middle. I know a lot of people talk about the middle, lower, growing whatever's left, MLGW. It's not necessarily the only way to do it, but it is a good way to remember to get all your buckles. You snap it, the key is that you wanna feed it. You don't wanna jerk it, right? So you're just gonna easily feed the slack out. Can you breathe okay? Is that too tight? Mm -hmm. Okay. Taking the strap down, get your lower. You can go ahead and pull some of the slack out. And you're going to snap this. And once again, easily feed that slack out. Is that okay? Can you breathe fine? Yep. Okay. Now that I have these two done, I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to roll this up. I'm going to tuck it. What you got to do is tuck the excess. If you don't tuck the excess, you're going to leave yourself in a position to where you could accidentally get it snagged on something, and you got a whole nother problem. So you got your middle, your lower, and we're gonna go with the growing. The key to this, once you feed the strap through, you're gonna use a little scissor action, right? Just gotta get it up under the leg, 
And you're just going to scissor it until it's nice and snug. Bring this around, connect it, and once again, you're going to feed the slack out of it. You don't want to pull it too tight, you don't want to jerk on it. Once you've kind of got it snug, is that okay? Yes. All right, so keep in mind when you're putting this, obviously, in the patient's growing area, you may have to pad. Um, if it's not comfortable, you could always put uh, some trauma pads, something like that in there. All right, you're going to do the same thing on this side. Scissor technique there, get it all the way up to the top. Okay. Ma'am, how does that feel? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Is it too tight? No? All right. So, tucking out of the way. Middle, lower, growing now, whatever's left, right? So now we've got this last top strap here. You gotta be careful with these across the belly and the, and the uh, chest. You wanna make them snug, but if you get them so tight that they can't breathe, then you've actually defeated the purpose. So once again, you're feeding the line. Once you get the, the strap through tight enough that it's snug, can you breathe okay? Does that hurt? No. Nope. All right. So now, you got the excess tucked away. She's holding C-spine. Now we need to secure the head. You have this pad here. Remember, what you want to do is you want to fill the gap between the patient and the back of the KED. You don't want to pull the head back. So you just tuck it on the head like this. That's the wrong thing to do. So if you stick it like this and it doesn't fit, you can double it over, right? Okay. Is that okay? Now, you could use a cravat. Some of these all come with a head strap. This one did not have a head strap. I'm going to show you what I could use. We have these right here. You got to improvise and overcome. If your package did not come with one, you can always use this right here, right? So you just want to go across the forehead. What we're not going to do is go across her neck. If at first you blind them, you just let them know you're going to fix that, right? That will be light eventually. There we go. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, so securing the head is key. Um, once you have this done, now what you have to do is you have to secure the hands and the feet. Because when you go to move this patient, the last thing you want, you can let go of the C-spine now, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, when you go to move them, you don't want them to reactionary, grab stuff, pull themselves down. That could be dangerous. So what I like to use is cravats using a handcuff knot. Now if I could just get you to put your hands in there. All right, I know this might be a little uncomfortable. We will release your hands just as soon as we get you moved over to the spine board. And we're gonna do the same thing with the feet. If you wanna learn how to do handcuff knots, you'll have to look at other videos down the road. We'll be doing knot class later. All right, so it's a very handy, quick, easy knot to make and very effective. Okay, there we go. Nice and cinched up. Now, once you have this done, you're going to go back and you're going to check pulse motor sensory of all four extremities. Can you feel me touching you? Yes. Can you wiggle your fingers? Awesome. You're going to come down here. If you can't feel it in the shoe, mm -hmm. you can always go behind the ankle. Okay. Can you feel me touching you? No. Can you wiggle your feet? Awesome. You got your positive pulse motor sensory. Now at this time, you're ready to move the patient over to the spine board. What we would do is you would have a couple of strong folks. You have some handles. We would move the patient out and then lay them flat onto the spine board or the stretcher. And as soon as you lay them flat, what you have to do then is reach around and pop these growing straps. Because if you don't, what's gonna happen is your patient's gonna have the legs like this, very uncomfortable from what I hear. So you wanna be able to let their legs lay flat. And then of course, at that point, they should be relaxed. You can come back 
and take their hands and their feet and release them. Reassess positive pulse motor sensory of all four. Transport your patient.